So good afternoon, um, everybody. Uh, my name is Eva Chujic, like Veronica said, I'm from University of Mostar, and I'm going to talk about today the um, story of Hackathon and how it can become a new age tool for learning STEAM education. Um, this paper I wrote together with my uh, colleague, Professor of Mathematics and Informatics, um, Ms. Snežana Damjanović, from high school in Orasje, north of um, Bosnia and Herzegovina. So let's get started. Um, so just to, before we get started uh, with organization, I want to talk about a little bit of educational system in Bosnia and Herzegovina. So Bosnia and Herzegovina has one of the most complicated arrangements in the world, referring to the fact the country has two entities, which are called Republika Srpska and Federation of Bosnia and Herzegovina, out of which one entity is unitary and the other one is federal. But not only that, uh, Bosnia and Herzegovina has three ethnic groups, Serbians, Croats, and Bosniaks. So today's educational system is very decentralized because responsibility for education is not at the state, le state level, but is really shattered uh, at the level of entities and cantons and local self-government. Since there is little to non-coordination between entities in federation level, cantons and legislators are not functioning in very effective way. So only the framework of educational law exists, but the law applied is res on responsibility of cantons and municipality level. So Bosnia and Herzegovina for that reason needs to step out of the shadow of the conflict and war and start to living in the present. Constitutional changes need to start to happen so that Bosnia and Herzegovina educational system would modernize and follow accelerate the way towards European integration and European Union. Um, Organization for uh, Economic Cooperation and Development, OECD, has uh, conducted a program called PISA, uh, which is Program for Student International Student Assessment. What that means is they assess reading, math, and science, and how students produce knowledge and use it in a familiar situation and situation outside of schools. So they did a um, really interesting report uh, in 2018, and they conducted it in 79 uh, educational systems around the world. Uh, Bosnia and Herzegovina has um, been involved in that uh, research and uh, really um, low numbers because uh, Bosnia and Herzegovina was at the really low 62nd place, which meant that 15 year olds in Bosnia and Herzegovina educational systems are really far behind their um, other peers, you know, in their age, kids of their age in um, different um, countries in the field of literacy, math, and science. It was also interesting to see there was 85% of the students with a positive outlook towards education. So that means there is still hope. That means that um, they believe that better education equals better job in the future. So this research was a clear indicator that changes need to happen and they need to start to happening soon. Those changes require different involvement of different actors not just at local or cantonal level, but also at the state level, um, as the framework for education needs to start from the state level. Uh, that's why University of Mostar has um, taken seriously um, this role and realized that um, we need more practical and involved hands-on approach that educational education starts from raising awareness, addressing the problem, not just uh, among the students, but teachers, school, um, school leaders, policy makers, so that's why University of Mostar has applied uh, to be national contact point uh, for scientists. But before we get into that, just want to talk about and brag a little bit about the university. Uh, university has been a um, community leader since 1992, and it's consisted of 10 faculties out of uh, which one, one uh, 11th faculty is Academy of Fine Arts. It has 140 educational study programs and over uh, 50 international uh, agreements. Um, just to tell you that we took this uh, national contact point role in 2020, which means that we didn't take it the most favorable time since the COVID-19 um, pandemic hit, but we did manage to promote scientists at national level. Uh, as you can see on the pictures, there are a lot of dissemination activities, activities that we did, workshop, presentation, projects, competition, but most important competition 
is called hackathon. But before we get into how to organize hackathon and what it means um, as a new age tool, let's talk about uh, a little bit about epistemology of the world. So the first part of the word, hack, uh, is the um, uh, in computer language refers to the piece of code that modifies a computer program, so it produces a software. So hack is not related uh, to um, hacking the system or keeping it hostage. The other part of the word, athon, is derived from the suffix of marathon and refers to the final event with unusual length that um, usually ends with, uh, when a prearranged goal has been reached. So organizing this kind of um, STEM event and competition, um, we organize it for high school kids ages 14 to 17. Why? Because we wanted them to solve real world problems, to search solutions, to because technology nowadays is really um, developing in rapid speed. Kids need to be up to date with it and use it as a tool to play and create something positive and also to have critical thinking. On the other side, uh, it gives uh, high school teachers great, um, great opportunity to engage students in STEM, uh, STEM activities. So, and also in this kind of competitions, uh, kids build networks with their, you know, the, the young kids, they learn um, technical skills, they play through it. So it's really, it's really um, a good uh, event to organize. So now about like organizing the hackathon, it takes usually 30 to 40 days to organize it. Um, there are rules, there are pre-elimination round, elimination round and uh, finals. In this year's competition, just to talk a little bit about the numbers, we had 135 schools enter the pre-elimination round. In the uh, elimination round, there were 51 schools. And then in the finals, there are 15 schools that left and so 15 um, teams were competing in the finals. Uh, thematic area, uh, we had it, this was our second year in the row. Um, so for each year you have different thematic um, fields. This year it was health, education and ecology. Um, so, so that's how we did it. We wanted, like I said, to solve real world problems. Um, first of all, before selecting um, hackathon jury, you need to be aware that a space that you're going to be using, it's easy accessible, uh, it's close, it has a lot of uh, outlets like you see here. Um, in our case, we had live broadcasting. Um, you have to have like we had table for the teams where they come and convey their ideas and on the right there are judges. Uh, this year we had judges from university. Uh, we had staff teachers and we had uh, um, people from private sector. Uh, we wanted to, because this kind of competition uh, combines all the sectors, you know, STEM education also combines private sector with um, public sector. Um, and, you know, IT knowledge was crucial uh, for involving somebody in um, this kind of competition. Uh, judges were uh, judging contestants uh, based on simplic simplicity ideas, design, and business value. Um, sponsors, to be a sponsor, you know, today uh, in today's world, it's really hard to make somebody give you their money. So you have to see what, um, what they're going to give back. For example, we had an IT, IT private firm. Um, they had one of the judges um, and uh, what they got, got out of the competition. Uh, they seek a young talent. They had like firms visibility more um, out there. So they invested, for example, the prizes this year were in Bitcoins, which is really interesting and um, fun way to, to give out the, uh, the prizes. So um, what we wanted to do is um, just promote STEM, uh, STEM education, uh, connect uh, sectors, and we wanted to give kids um, opportunity through play to have critical thinking and, you know, thinking about something, uh, something positive. Um, these, are the, these are all the sponsors that were involved in this year's competition. Uh, I'm now, now going to go through the, the second part of this pre presentation, which uh, refers to the uh, teacher's point of view of this uh, competition, which my colleague um, has, has wrote actually. So 
uh, the teacher's obstacles, uh, you know, refer to the fact that teachers need to be ready to invest in their knowledge. So since Bosnia and Herzegovina educational system, like I said, um, it's very decentralized. Uh, subjects are really kept apart and there is no correlation between them. Uh, in this particular case, my colleague, the um, math and informatic uh, teacher, had advantage to participate in this kind of event because she had uh, she had the knowledge. So uh, for this year's theme, um, their um, their application was digital um, digital greenhouse. They wanted to uh, they build this program to help students of agricultural school who did practical classes in digital green classrooms. So their goal was to design and create application that measures humidity, uh, pH level uh, of soil and air temperature. So all the measurements were performed. As you can see, most of you know, I think this is Arduino set. Um, when I first saw it, it really looked complicated <laughs> with all these uh, things to connect. So you do have to have some basic knowledge or today, like we all know, YouTube is a pr pretty perfect place to, to find um, everything. So what they did, they used this set um, and uh, it includes necessary sensors uh, for the soil and temperature. After that, um, they connected it you know, to the Arduino set and measure all the, all the data. So um, if you know, they compare it with optimal values using the information from the database, and the main server. So that's how this is how um, their process that lasted also about the month. Um, so they had the sensors. They the sensor sends the information to the uh, control board that sends information to the database through Wi-Fi to the application they created and to the cell phone. So the application is easy accessible um, through the uh, through the mobile phone. This is how their application looked like. So they had uh, the features of the profile, digital greenhouse, Arduino control, notification, location, the time. So um, once um, once Arduino set and sensors, um, you know, uh, measure the data from temperature, uh, humidity, and um, pH level of soil. Signal is sent to the platform that and you uses different um different lights for humidity temp for ph level and temperature and um senses immediately to the notification so you can see um pupils can see the problem like uh, they had two crops in this case they have potato and then they had the carrots so if something was wrong on the notification they could um they could see like i said that process uh lasted um one month where they measure the um all the factors and the visual content uh, that was created um this was their presentation uh next year they they hope that they will probably add irrigation pump that would automatically turn on when the arduino uh, notices deviation from optimal values so um participation is like really great to to as far as the application and when they presented it they were a little bit scared that's why they they didn't win uh they were not um at the at the top actually uh the um, the team that won uh created um application open book which was the centralized platform for announcing the books but uh, this teacher said that uh this kind of event um is like really good for um, thinking and competition uh, that doesn't allow uh, allow students to fail, which is a big factor in learning process. Um, you know, the projects were based on inquiry and learning and STEM principle, which is uh, most important. So the reason why we organize, just to sum it up, um, is to remove barriers between schools, teachers, kids, and encourage students to to use um, STEM disciplines and to show them how through play they can um, have critical and positive thinking and create something that will actually save real world problems. And I forgot to say that um, when I talk about removing the barriers, the IT firm that uh, had one of the judges uh, actually offered um, some of the kids summer internship, which is one of the positive outcomes like i said this competition doesn't allow failure so everybody is winner of course some of them were at the top but 
everybody got an opportunity, you know? So working, working with mentors, networking professionals in an industry, this kind of event, I think everybody, everybody should organize. So thank you for your attention. Um, if you have any further questions, this is my email email address. And if you have questions um, now for me, please feel free to put them in the chat. Thank you so much. Thank you, Eva. I think that was a really insightful um, presentation. I was, I was blown away with how quickly it could be all put together, like 30 to 40 days. That's that's pretty impressive. Um, 135 schools, um, trying to narrow that down to 15 teams, I'd say that would be quite a challenge for uh, the judges. Um, I was really, I was, I was captured by the way that you said that the children were engaged in play. And I think often people think that play is, is merely just for younger children, but it's to, to look at it from the older point of view where it is tackling all those um, skills that you know they're they're exploring they're investigating and that's play at a, at a, at a more senior level um, it was really really interesting and um, lots of wonderful comments coming in on the chat as well lots of thanks people finding it really really interesting i think you're probably inspiring lots of people to have an attempt at a hackathon within their own um region I was just wondering, how do you come across, like, how do you come up with the thematic areas that you would target in in a particular year? Uh, for example, like I said, we took out the part of um, national contact point in the pandemic year. So naturally, health was one of the sections that we were striving for. Ecology is one of the things that European Union is striving for. And since we're in education, it was logical this year, you know, to expand. And those are the big three big uh, topics. But there are like a lot of different um, themes that could be used. For example, um, I don't know, to create a application where you can see if there's like emergency um, somewhere or it, it's like a lot of if there is a fire if they, you know it's like a lot of different um, themes under the section of health and education and ecology could be accomplished so we and gave them like freedom like really a lot of freedom to come up with their ideas and I, th I think that's probably key, the fact that you have such a broad heading that it, it allows the students to pick whichever area they have a natural interest in and to strive from there. Um, yeah, no, it's it's really fantastic. Of course, and, and, not, and not to limit him, like like you said, it's like through play, it should be interesting, but at the same time, they should be like aware of that maybe some of their application some of them like had application for example for traffic traffic cams traffic something that already existed but they needed to give their take on it they needed to uh, like show the cr uh, critical thinking which is one of the things that stem education uh, promotes so that's what we were striving for for them to develop um, that way of thinking to work on it and through play to to be not even know that they're involved in STEM education actually so this is the first step it is it really is and I think as well it's it's probably helped having the the support from all the external sector as well and um, so that you know for for the children to have the opportunity to then go on and have an internship and um, where they can actually see what they were doing kind of put mm -hmm. that into into the context exactly. of, so, of work not not just like winning or losing or you won first one of the first three places actually having something not just like talking about it oh you know if you, you didn't win you have something no they actually have concrete summer internship in the private it firm where they could like accelerate and you know use further um, what they what they um, learn through the through this kind of competition and in their schools, of course, and and for teachers also, the, it's mentoring. That's why for me, um, this part that my colleague was talking about, it's it's the system that doesn't let you in learning. It's very important. It doesn't let you fail. You always, you know, you can see that you can just like make it better. Even though, for example, her students did a great application had a 
but when they came um, to the stage, they had like sta stage frightening and it kind of, it kind of brought them to, they were sad because they were like, oh my God, we did so much work. And, and she was like, it's okay. At least you tried next year mm -hmm. is going to be better. But you know that one of the component it's talking, it's, it's, you know, being involved and in, in having your own voice, not to just, you know, I'm going to create something and do not know what I'm talking about or be scared to, to show everybody. And I, I think do. that's the key. There, there is all those additional skills, not purely the content or, or, or the scientific skills that we learn. It's also the collaboration, the ability to work as part of a team and to compromise. And, and I think sometimes they can be the skills that um, often we, we kind of, we, we, as educators, we think about content a lot, but I think now there's that shift towards encouraging, you know, the broader skills as well and looking at how we can incorporate them in as well with our science education. Of course, because you want to have a complete person when once you're out of the high school and you have to enter real world, you know, and if, you know, people, some people don't want to continue to college, they seek real job. So in the real interviews, you have to know how to present yourself. You have to be able to be well-rounded person at least that that's what i think so i that's why i think this kind of competition is a really positive and good way to to at least start doing it raise awareness you know